Hey, 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 everybody. It's your girl, Ice Baby, from Hood News Media. Thanks for tuning in. I want to give a shout out to Dr. Ish and uh, Dr. V for acknowledging me. Such a big deal for me because I'm a nobody. And um, I'm just really happy to to be here and, and to give you my take on this time around Marriage Boot Camp, Season 13, Episode 1 and 2. I am really, really, really excited for this upcoming season. They have some couples that I do know about, and then they have some couples that I do not. And that's generally the situation every time there's a um, marriage boot camp. Some people I know, some people I don't. And I hope that you guys continue to tune in every week on my take of this season. So I'm going to give a little introduction of of all of the couples and and what I've seen so far. So we're going to start with Kim and Wynn. Um, They are from some real housewife reality show. I'm not sure which one. I'm not sure if it's uh, Beverly Hills. I'm not sure if it's New York. I, I'm not, I know they're not from the Atlanta one. And so I'm not sure which one they have been on before. Um, It seems like Kim is pretty much involved in her relationship. She wants to make things work. She probably has some insecurities because Mr. Wynn seems to want a young, hot, banging babe. And it doesn't seem like he finds Kim to be attractive or being that she's not this, you know, in his eyes, this bodacious babe, you know, I guess he's yearning for that, even though he's with her. But in one of the scenes, it seems like she was questioning even if she was his girlfriend. Um, he kind of comes off as like a, a creeper, you know, uh, he, he can come off as sometimes as being, you know, charming. And then he just turns into a creep in the same second sec. Like, it's just crazy. You know, him having a conversation with the ladies, it'll, you know, be just be a regular conversation. And then he starts talking about their boobs and how they're just this and they're that. And it's really inappropriate. You know, he's an older gentleman, you know, he's, he's no young whippersnapper. Okay. Um, and he, he just wants to, you know, live his vida loca. He wants to do him. He wants to be on the scene, uh, and be with, with younger babes. And you know what? At the end of the day, to each his own, if that's how you really feel when, and Kim is not fulfilling that fantasy for you or that need for you, then stop stringing her along because guess what? That's not cool. Okay. It's not fair to her. You know, you're, you're, you're pushing your needs on her and clearly, you know, she's an older woman and you know, she's not 20 years old anymore. She's not 18 anymore. She doesn't look that way. And no matter how much money you have, you try to alter your body. It's not happening. So for you to throw it in her face that, you know, this is what you like and, and this is what you're looking for. And, you know, you're not so much attracted to, to her look. It's fucked up and it's not necessary. You have options, just like she has options, obviously. But there's no need for you to string her along if if you're looking always to the side for another hot piece of ass. So I hope you get your shit together because you're you're pissing me off just thinking about it. So kudos to Kim for sticking by him and trying to be strong. You don't need nobody like that on your side. Especially if they're not willing to just accept you for who you are and, and, and they're not constantly throwing in your face that you're not, you know, a young hot bod. And when you're not a young hot bod either, so whatever. Um, so let's see what happens with that. Uh, another a couple is going to be Mommy, uh, Mama D and Ernest. I know them. They are from another reality show called um, Love and Hip Hop. Atlanta. And... I love me some Mama D. Uh, Mama D is an, an older lady and uh, she married Ernest. She's known Ernest for many, many years. And they've been through a lot of shit. Uh, I mean, a lot of stuff. I mean, to the point where she actually put him in jail and he served some time and he was released and 
for some reason they went ahead and got back together and actually remarried and and they have issues you know uh Ernest loves his mother a whole lot and I think that Mama D has a big issue with that because she feels like she should be the number one woman in his life being that she's now the wife and I totally understand that you know we're not saying that me as you know as a married woman you know there has to be balances to things in life and you know, you have your wife and you have your mom and you love them. You may love one more than the other, but you have to keep them. You know, you can't have one of them feel like the other it has to fight for your love. And I think that Mama D is feeling that way at some point. She feels like, you know, wow, you know, you're always running to your mother. You're always, you know, every time there's a problem, you go run into your mother. You know, I'm your woman. You know, I'm the woman you lay with every night. And, you know, I want that same respect. And I don't think Ernest is giving it to her. And I think he once outright said, well, I love my mother more than I love you. And I, I can understand that. But I don't think it was necessary for him to say that. I think that goes without saying. I think that's something that would go without saying. But who am I? I'm just Ice Baby from Hood News Media, right? What do I know? But um, I'm interested to see um, how all of that is going to turn out. So there are other issues too. Mama D likes to have a good time. Mama D wants to get it in. She likes to have her drinks. She likes to have a good time. And she likes getting it on. I mean, kudos to Mama D. You know, there's a lot of women that once they reach a certain age, they're not interested. You know, they they rather just sit down and watch TV, watch soap operas and, and knit all day. You know, so so kudos to Mama D for still wanting to get it on. I ain't mad at your sister. And poor Ernest, poor, poor Ernest. You know, I feel bad for him. He <laughs> it seems like, you know, he may have to pop a pillow to to keep up with Miss Mama D. And, you know, I guess it is what it is in a marriage. You you have to do what you have to do. And I guess we'll see where that goes. Um, it seems like, you know, Miss Mama D, when she gets her drink on, she has a lot to say. And um, she could come off as, you know, verbi verbally abusive and. And and so, you know, Ernest doesn't stay too much behind. He also, you know, has some verbal abuse going on as well. Um, they get into a little altercation and, you know, thankfully no one was hurt. But it seems like uh, it's going to be a very interesting with them, too. And we're going to move on to uh, Puma and Kwani. Puma and Kwani um, are a couple um, from Black Ink, New York. And um, I've seen them before. And I kind of know a little bit of their history. Um, they're, you know, they've been married for a couple of years now. They have a little girl. <clears throat> and um, I, I really didn't know that they were going through any problems. Um, the only problems I saw when they were on Black Ink was uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of problems with Kwani's mom. And I don't remember why or the specifics on how that all started. Um, I know... She had a problem with Puma, and it wasn't for infidelities. Um, I know that. I remember that it wasn't for that. Um, it was for something else, and I'm and I'm not sure. But anywho, you know they're on the show now, and it it seems like um things have taken a turn within their marriage. Uh, it seems like you know the intimacy may have. Um, gone away between them two and you know that's always sad to hear about you know intimacy within a marriage is very important um, it's also you know it's like a job like it's, it's really hard to just balance everything in your life and you know you're, you're you know you have a job you, you have a child you have a husband you know you're working you come home you have to cook you know you have to do your day to day and then still feel you know, up to, you know, being intimate with your partner. And, you know, as women, we we go through changes and not only with postpartum, but also the effects of birth control. And it seems like Kwani is taking, is on some birth control and it's affecting her, her intimacy. It's affecting her, um, her wanting to be intimate with her husband and you know that could cause a lot of problems within a marriage uh i hope that they could work past through it 
maybe she can all you know take something else um an alternative uh, birth control where it really doesn't affect her yearning for sex and you know hopefully they could get past that and and I'm hoping that that's the only issue. I'm hoping that there aren't any other issues uh, within their marriage. Um, hopefully that's something that they could work through and, and make better um, at the end. Uh, our next couple is going to be Paulie D from the Jersey Shore. I'm sure everyone uh, is familiar with Paulie D. And then we have Aubrey, who is a girl from uh, a former girl group called uh what is it called Danity Kane and it seems like she has a lot of problems with Mr. Paulie D and let me tell you something if you have not seen Mr. Paulie D in action <laughs> on Jersey Shore uh, let me just tell you this Paulie D is a DJ and we all know the type of lifestyles the majority of DJs have so it is what it is he's a single man and you know He's always DTF, and, and that's the term that they use in the Jersey Shore called down to fuck. And so he has a lot of women, you know, that are just there, ready to, you know, DT, DTF as well. They're just ready to get it on, and wherever he goes, the groupies follow. And, you know, he's not an ugly gentleman. You know, he, he's a handsome gentleman, so he has his fair share of women. And he's DJing in Las Vegas out of all places, he has a residency there and, you know, he has a lot of fans, a lot of fans. And so Aubrey is having to deal with that problem. Him constantly, you know, having to dip and dodge the groupies. And he's very uh, particular with the things that he that he does at home. He has a home. It seems like Aubrey lives with him and she comes with a little baggage. You know, she's probably a little messy and he likes things a certain way and he's very meticulous and... You know, the weave is everywhere. The clothes are everywhere. Her, her little dog is just wrecking the place and just running, you know, running amok through his home. And, and he likes everything clean. And, and I understand that. It's your home. And now you're in a relationship with someone. And when you are that person who has to, who, who is deciding to move in with your partner, you know, they, they are used to living a certain way. And you have to respect that, you know, um, I know a relationship is, you know, there's a lot of, there, there should be some compromise within a relationship. So I understand that. But at the end of the day, that, that's his home. And if he's asking you, hey, listen, you know, I don't like this. I, I need you to do this. Or, you know, I prefer that you do that. You, you may want to, you know, take that into consideration and just do it. And if, you, and if you feel like you can't do it, then you need to get out and get your own place. Maybe you, you shouldn't be living with them. Maybe you guys can get something together that you can both call your own, you know, like together, that it belongs to both you and him versus this is my place. These are my rules. Take it or leave it. But, you know, you, you just can't go into someone's home and and expect to do what you want to do and there not be a problem. So, you know, um, it, I don't see Paulie D being very affectionate with her. I don't I don't see him really tending to her. Um, cries for help, her her cries for change or anything like that. And I don't know if that is a reciprocation of her not giving a shit about how things are, are being handled in his home with, you know, with her running amok and her dog running amok in, her, in his home. I don't know if he's treating her like that, you know, um, because of that, as a result of doing that to his home. I'm not sure. I kind of feel like this is just what he is. This is the way he is. You know, he's Paulie D, you know, take it or leave it. And, and, and that's that. I mean, there was a a scene in the show in episode two where she's like crying and pleading with him. And, you know, she outright said, you know, you laugh at me when I cry. And and me personally, I, I've been through that. I, I was in a relationship for seven years and I remember that. Clear as day, I would cry and plead with my boyfriend, and he used to laugh at me. And, and that's one of the worst feelings to ever feel, and, and it's something that I never wish on anyone. It, it, it's so aggravating to, you know, you love someone and you're crying with them 
you know, letting them know, hey, you're hurting me. You know, you're making me feel a certain way. You know, this is this is what's going on with me. You know, I want I want you to change. I want I want this and that from you. And for the for the person that you're pleading with to outright laugh in your face is so fucked up. And I just remember just wanting to cry more and more and more. It was horrible. It it was so toxic. It never got any better. That was a long time ago, and I'm I'm no longer with that person. But I know firsthand how that feels, and it's fucked up. You know, and if Paulie D is doing that, then he needs to stop. And he just needs to move on. You know, if, if the person that you love is pleading with you and, and, and crying out to you about how they feel and, and what they need from you, and you're laughing in return, that's a relationship you don't need to be in. And that's someone you don't need in your life. So I hope that they get it together. Uh, I guess we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen with them. I really don't. And let's see who else we have. We have another uh, couple. And their name is Desiree and Chris. They are from an episode, I be, uh, a season of The Bachelor. So I'm not too familiar with them. One thing I noticed with <laughs> Marriage Boot Camp is that Every season, you know, they have a they have a couple of couples that that I guess are some people do know more than others, and then you have the, these bachelorette couples or the the dating reality show couples that come on to uh, marriage boot camp. And for me personally, because I've been because I've been watching marriage boot camp since the very beginning. They kind of have like a like a track record. The couples that come from the dating reality shows, um, to me, in my opinion, they always feel like they don't know why they're at marriage boot camp. There's nothing wrong with them. Everything is just you know all hunky dory, peaches and cream. Everything's all rosy, and we're in love. And they're very very judgmental of the other couples in in the home. At the marriage boot camp, you know, they don't understand why they're there. They never have any issues. They never want to own up to how they really feel. They kind of like put up this facade of this perfect, you know, union. And it's all bullshit. Like, it, it really is. It's, it's really all bullshit. And it, it kind of bothers me that they all kind of feel that way. You know, they go in with their noses up like, oh, you know, look at them. Oh, they, they really have problems. Oh, look at them. They're not going to make it. But when it comes to the the things that they're asked to do at the marriage boot camp, the exercises, and, you know, they and there's a lot of great tools that Dr. Ish and Dr. V have. And I learn a lot from them watching through the television with my husband and and you know it makes me think about a lot of different things. I, I really, really enjoy the show uh, for that reason as well. Because not only are they giving these people therapy, they're kind of giving me therapy too. Um, in a sense, there's a lot of of, of important and and uh, tools that they that they give. And through these 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 uh, exercises that they do, they kind of make you want. They they kind of need you to dig deep and you're not realizing that you're digging deep and and that's you know the whole uh great thing about these exercises is that you're working without even knowing that you're really working on the issues at hand and I like that approach that they have and so with these you know reality show couples it's always some bullshit they never want to dig deep they're always you know if if you know if, if the practice is like hey you know, name five things that you wish your partner didn't do or you would like for them to do. It's always some vague, just bullshit all the time. And I'm just like, oh, here we go. Every, you know, every season, is it, there's always that couple that they just think nothing's wrong with them. And let me tell you something. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. We're always thinking that there's something not wrong. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So. That's kind of my wrap up for the season one, season two 
I mean, not season one, season two, episode one, episode two of uh, this season of, of Marriage Crew Camp. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And uh, every week I will be tuning in with you guys and giving you my take on what's going on with the show and how I feel things are going down. And again, shout out to Dr. Ish and Dr. V, you know, for always, always doing their best with these couples and, and trying to get everyone back on track. It, it 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 seems to be not an easy job to do, but it seems like it's something that they love to do. So kudos to them on helping people be better people, better lovers. And uh, I really enjoy the show, and I hope you do too. And I'll be checking you guys out next week. This is Icy Baby, and I'm here from Hood News Media. You could check us out. We are on all platforms, you know, Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, Tumblr, YouTube, Hood News Media with a Z. We're here and uh, I'll be uh, tuning in again next week. You guys have a a wonderful day and I'll be speaking to you soon. Bye-bye.